on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. I'm going to present to you my analysis of the Telegram ICO white paper, as I promised you yesterday. Today's show is a little bit late because I went to London to film some footage because I'm being featured in a Bitcoin documentary. How about that? And today's episode is brought to you by Roboform, my number one favorite password manager app of all time. With Roboform, you'll never need to remember or even type in a password ever again. So Roboform ensures maximum security when you're working with your digital assets because you can create a different password for every single service that you use and you don't have to remember them. So download a free trial of Roboform by clicking on the link in the video description below. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney. So today I would like to continue where I left off yesterday by going even deeper into my investigation into the rumored, still remains rumored, Telegram ICO and their blockchain based apps platform. Now I'm glad I did this in two parts actually because now I've had 24 hours to reflect on what I talked about yesterday, that's given rise to a few insights, okay? Now the first insight is that I do not think these materials have been leaked by accident. The marketer in me is beginning to think this is actually just part of a very clever product launch strategy, right? By seeding the market with small pieces of quote leaked information, or then people like me jump on it and then basically start promoting it for free. And then other media outlets do the same, and then the news goes viral, and Telegram don't have to spend a penny on advertising in order to build some hype around their project, right? This isn't fact, it's just what I have started to think based on what I see and based on my own experience doing marketing campaigns that have very similar characteristics, to be honest. So that's insight number one. Second, I still have not heard any official word from Telegram as to whether they can confirm or deny any of this. I suspect if they were not doing anything of the sort, like an ICO, a cryptocurrency, or a blockchain, then they would just come out with a strong denial. But they haven't, right? You look at, say, the Telegram Twitter account, and there's no mention from it. Actually, the last time they tweeted out was the 30th of December, and even then, that was just an announcement about a new version of the Messenger app. And then you can look at the Telegram blog and pretty much just has the same information on it that's on Twitter. Just announcements about upcoming versions, new versions, and the previous version. So kind of interesting there. So the main promise that I made to you yesterday was that I would analyze the draft white paper, which is, it's not actually a draft white paper. It's officially called the primer document. So the cover page, which I keep showing there, has the Telegram logo on it, and it says Telegram primer. It's only 23 pages long, and I've picked out the pertinent pieces, so let's go and have a look at them right now. So you can get a pretty good overview of the project from the table of contents, actually. So let me just show that here. Like I say, 23 pages, you can get a good overview just by browsing this table of contents and what the 23 pages actually says. Now, the foundation of the project is the Telegram Open Network, right? And the techniques they describe for this massive scalability. So this section called the TON blockchain, T-O-N, the, sorry, not the, Telegram Open Network. Um, you'll understand why I said the later on when we get onto that, because they're going to rename what TON means, but we'll get onto that. So the TON blockchain and this massive scalability, right? The infinite sharding thing, the two-dimensional blockchain thing, yada, 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 that will provide the foundation upon which other features of the TUN platform um, will be, well, they'll, they'll be able to provide those services on top of that massive scalability, such as things like um, TUN storage, TUN proxy, uh, TUN services, TUN DNS, and of course, TUN payments. So TUN, it kind of, it's like TOR, isn't it? It's just one, one letter difference. So then they have this section about integrating Telegram into, sorry, Telegram Messenger into the TON network itself. That's from sort of page 10 onwards. 
And of course, then that means that, you know, the Telegram Messenger app is going to interact with the network somehow and provide an interface for it. And the paper does specifically say that it will launch in 2018. So that is something specific. However, when you take a look at the roadmap later on, uh, the full release isn't scheduled until the fourth quarter of the year, right? And speaking of dates, while TUN stands for Telegram Open Network Today, it says in the white paper that they will change this to the Open Network, T-O-N, in 2021. That's interesting, isn't it? That's why I said the, because I've, I've started, kind of got used to thinking about it as the Open Network. Now, the primer also makes references to a technical white paper, which I have not yet managed to get my hands on. Um, but they do make several references to this when they describe something technical, um, which they don't fully define. So they've got a separate document for that. So the paper sets the scene, right, by using Bitcoin and Ethereum as the best examples of crypto to date, but that are still falling short of something the average person can use for day-to-day -day transactions, right, which they say is their goal for the Telegram network. And they highlight the fact that the Tun wallet, which will be integrated right into the Telegram Messenger app, will quickly become the world's number one adopted cryptocurrency wallet. One question I had about that is how they're going to handle people's private keys, right? How are they going to keep it super friendly and super easy to use while at the same time making sure that users actually back up their wallets and making sure that users are the only people that ever have access to their funds? We shall have to see on that front, right? Now, they say this also in the, um, in the promo video that I showed yesterday, that 500,000 new people a day come to Telegram and sign up for the Telegram Messenger app. So I'd say that's quite normal for a Messenger app, but half a million downloads a day for a cryptocurrency wallet, that's pretty huge, don't you agree? So that's all sort of the introductory section. So then I was talking a minute ago about the Tun blockchain section, and they talk about how the Tun blockchain will have this two-dimensional architecture, infinite sharding and so on. Or as they, as they refer to in... Um, the promo video they say every block can become its own blockchain which in the in the paper here i think they refer to that as uh, instant hypercube routing or 2d distributed ledgers which are two phrases that i've never heard before but they do they are logically consistent with how they describe these technologies to potentially work and again they refer to the technical white paper for more detail on how all this stuff works but I have not yet got my hands on that. Anyway, assuming all the fancy infrastructure provides the massive scaling that they claim, then it comes to the services the network can provide, such as like TON storage, which I mentioned a minute ago, which is like decentralized file storage system, similar to the ones we've seen in the blockchain space so far. Then they've got uh, TON proxy, which would enable services like VPN or anonymizing services like Tor for privacy and so on. And again, refer to the white paper for more technical details. Then they go on to talk about TUN services, which is where you'd access all the various decentralized apps or even a decentralized World Wide Web built on the uh, Telegram network. And then they have TUN DNS, a decentralized naming system. So we'd be able to give human readable names to, well, everything really, rather than just cryptographic addresses. You know, websites on the network, people, um, all that kind of stuff. And then finally, they have TON payments, of course, which will enable micropayments and achieve this day-to-day -day usage that they mentioned earlier on. You know, Telegram may be targeting the mainstream with this, but we all know that Telegram is the chat platform of choice for cryptocurrency projects. So there is this page, let's see if I've got it up here. Yeah, it's called External Secure IDs. And on this page, you'll see there's a chart here. If I just scroll down a little bit more, this shows how Telegram is clearly the market leader among cryptocurrency projects. So they compare official ICO discussion groups, and this is data from tokenmarket.net for October 2017. So they have like a measurement of past, current, and upcoming projects, and whether they use Telegram, Slack, or Discord as their official ICO discussion group. And um, long story short, for current and upcoming projects, 
categorically telegram is the most popular right so they're citing that information right there so what that means to me is that while ultimately this will become the most accessible cryptocurrency wallet for the mainstream um us early adopters and crypto enthusiasts are going to jump all over aren't we and also when a guy like me sees something like this do you know what i think i think that projects will start conducting their icos right inside the telegram network from inside the chat groups i mean that would be ideal wouldn't it because a lot of people try and go into the telegram chat groups for these icos and attempt to con people into clicking an external link to a site that steals your private keys and stuff or is what if there was the official telegram chat group and you could send in your grams which is the currency on the telegram network what if you could send those in right to the ico right from inside the project's chat group which you knew would be the legitimate chat group right because the admins would be there that's where all the members would be so that's uh, that bodes well for um reducing phishing attacks and that kind of thing i would not be surprised because the paper then goes on to say that the telegram will sorry the telegram wallet will also function as like a a digital id wallet where you'll save uh, copies of your encrypted id documents like you know, your driving license and passports and all your private data basically and then you would use telegram to log into services or even just complete kyc checks in a single click right so let's actually take a look at the roadmap because i just brought that up just there this is going to tell us when this is all supposedly going to unfold so it starts off in 2013 with the launch of the actual telegram messenger app but let's just get right up to the modern day so here quarter one of 2018 launch of the telegram external secure id so they're starting off with that the digital identity wallet part of the project because that then will be the login for all the various services that come after that minimum viable test network by the second quarter security audits in the third quarter deployment of a stable version of the network in the fourth quarter also in the fourth quarter the launch of the telegram wallet and then first quarter of 2019 creation of the ton based economy in telegram second quarter of 2019 launch of all the services storage proxy you know vpn services all that kind of stuff decentralized apps and so on so it's going to be a year or more before it really starts getting motoring but that doesn't stop us all getting incredibly excited about the fundraiser in the meantime does it now in terms of the token itself that is just in the next section i believe the token sale itself is supposed to launch in the first quarter of 2018 as it says here telegram is launching a token sale in q1 2018 so that's straight from the horse's mouth assuming this is a legitimate document which we can't verify at this point and then they say they they'll they'll do the fundraiser in the first quarter with tokens issued in the fourth quarter when the network launches for real right because this is going to be its own blockchain it's not like an ethereum based app they'll have to just raise the money and then give you the tokens later when the network launches so it says after the initial supply of tokens is issued uh, which is this section here it says the annual inflation rate will be something like two percent which is where the money will come from to pay the nodes that are validating transactions and stuff right now that should also mean and this is just me saying this that the telegram open network should have no fees right because the it's similar to eos in the sense that it's newly created currency that's given to the validators and that's how they get paid so they shouldn't have to charge transaction fees as well especially if it's going to be adopted by the mainstream having zero fee transactions that are instant is what we want right so then moving on from there it says that the initial supply of tokens will be five billion so five billion grams uh, four percent of which will go to the development team which will be vested for four years 44 percent of the tokens will be sold in the ico and then 52 percent will be retained in reserve they say to protect the token from speculation which could you know wildly affect the token's value and actually mess with the viability of the ecosystem as a whole so then they say here that the first token sold will cost 10 cents us and then the price will increase by one billionth for each subsequent token so it's like a dime sale the very first token that's sold is 10 cents the next token is one billionth more expensive the next token is one billionth more expensive and on and on it goes it's kind of a very interesting 
algorithm that they've come up with there to do this dime sale method. And as I said yesterday with much frustration, much frustration, a private pre-sale for institution, sorry, institutional investors is mentioned in this as well, which again, doesn't please me at all. So that's pretty much how that's gonna work. So in conclusion, I'm honestly gonna to have to stick to what I've already said. This all still seems a bit too good to be true. And without any official word from Telegram themselves, I'm just gonna to have to sit right in the middle of skepticism and optimism. Do I want this to be true? Absolutely. But that's not the basis on which I determine what is true. And I would strongly encourage you and everyone listening to this to do the same in all of your cryptocurrency research. So thanks very much for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new around here, get subscribed. And if you would like access to my very best material, then go to cryptoversity.com and click on courses. You can take any one of my online courses or if you scroll to the bottom of that page, book any one of my two live workshops coming up in February in London. Also make sure you followed me or subscribe to me on DTube so you can get some cryptocurrency rewards for your best comments. If you make a decent comment and make a contribution to the discussion, I will upvote your post myself, your comment, and then you'll get maybe five or $10 worth of cryptocurrency rewards for that. All right, that's all for today, guys. I will be back tomorrow, which is Friday, which means it's live stream weekly roundup. So join me for that if you would. Until then, guys, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.